Frankie was listed in the phone book. <laughs> so I called him on the phone and he said, no, 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 I don't Lindy Hop anymore. I'm retired from it. And I see it. these young, <laughs> these two young dudes, and they want to no, dance. We, I really want to dance with you. You know, would you at least see us if we oh, came wow. to New York? You need to tell me there's still somebody around who wants to do this stuff, man. Well, okay, if you're here, I'll, I'll meet right you. Right away, it came right back to me. You know, I wanted to dance again because I, there were young people who wanted to do this, you know. I'm just really amped that he's here, like, I don't know, he's, it's such an honor for him to teach us. And I love the music, the music's awesome. <laughs> I didn't start out as, as I said, well, I'm going to be a dancer, a professional dancer. I was working as a furrier when I quit school. I was working as a furrier, and I was also dancing, you know, so that I thought was going to be my calling, you know, I was going to be a furrier, man. I can make some coats for the women who wear, you know, some pretty fur coats and all that kind of stuff like that. But I, I loved dancing. <laughs> a lot of time when I was down on the job, it was supposed to be cutting furs and all that kind of stuff. I was doing some little step. <laughs> Something like that. Now there was a fellow called Herbert White. He could dance. We call him Whitey. He could dance, but he was not a dancer in that sense. I mean, he never, he never performed or anything like that. But I, I just think he had a foresight. He saw potential in in this dance. So what Whitey would do, he would, you know, he would peruse the floor at times, you know, which is the way that he recruited me and recruited recruited a lot of his dancers. Like he had said, well, okay, uh, y'all can get together. You can come up here on, you know, during the day. You can rehearse, practice, whatever you want to do. So these dancers became like Whitey's dancers, you know, or the Savoy dancers. What was so enjoyable about, you know, like being with them, um, with the Whitey's group, we could go in the Savoy in the daytime and, you know, fool around. We'd play our records and dance, or as I said, a band rehearsing. We would dance to the band while they're rehearsing. And then we'd say, we'd go home, take a shower, change the clothes, come back the night and dance. <laughs> it was a wonderful life. It was wonderful. And I'm still living a wonderful life, I think. Nowadays, if you say Lindy Hop, there's very few people who, who know the word. You know, you say Lindy Hop, and they just look at you, you know. What is that? And then you say uh, Jitterbug, and their face light up because they have heard Jitterbug for so long that they think that's what it is. We did a play on Broadway called Swing in a Dream. It was taken at, after the Midnight Summer's Dream, but it was called Swing in a Dream. So they had all these big time orchestras like they had Lionel Hampton and Benny Goodman and, and uh, Louis Armstrong, all these swinging musicians in the show. And we, they also had Lindy Hoppers in the show, with white as Lindy Hoppers. Uh, but we did a scene where we were in a lot of bushes and things and we had these like uh, little lights on us, you know, and they would, you know, flicker on and off. And we were like in the trees, you know, they had a, 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 a scene where it was trees and, you know, like all up in there. We was jumping from these trees down onto the floor and uh, coming out of these bushes with these little lights flickering. And that scene was called the Jitterbug Scene. Now, I'm not saying that's how it got its word, but 
but we did do a scene that was called the Jitterbug scene. And when you, you read the program, it says the Jitterbugs, but it was just a scene that we were doing, but we were really doing the Lindy Hop. <laughs> I feel happy. <laughs> I feel happy and I think other people look happy when they're dancing it. Lindy Hop, is, people are out there and they're dancing with their souls, I feel like. The, uh rhythm hotshots from Sweden have recreated the old time routines. I mean, they've taken a couple of Lindy Hop routines. I mean, the one that we did in Hell of Poppin' and one that we did in Radio City Music Hall, and they recreated those steps. They have one of the best recreative groups around. I feel that the partner dancing is coming back. Uh, I, I guess say like in the 50s and the 60s, uh, uh, everybody wanted to just show their individualism, you know. Now I think uh, people are kind of drifting back to the point of, yeah, I want to get together with a partner. some young dancers coming along, like Steve Mitchell, Ryan Francois, and, and Aaron Stevens. They love Lindy Hopkins, and uh, I think they're going to be like the new innovators. Places where, where youngsters were dancing, and uh, and they were doing, you know, hip hop and, and whatever else they were doing, and then a music would come on. It's hip hop music, but it has a, a little beat behind it. And I would start doing the Lindy Hop and swinging out, and uh, these youngsters would start gathering around, looking at me dancing. You know, hey, what are you doing, man? You know, one of those things like that, and. Uh, and I've had a few of them to come up to me and say, that, oh, do you teach this anyway? Frida used to live like next door to me, you know. Frida Washington, I lived at 240 and she lived at 238. We both were on the top floor. So she would run over to my house, you know, to my apartment from her house. I'd run over the roof to her apartment from, from my house, you know. So it was, you know, buddy, buddy. I'd holler out the window, hey, Frida, come on over. So she said, okay, you know. And she comes over and, and 
Uh, I'm not going to go through the little falls and everything that we had, but anyway, we got to a point where where we knew I, I knew how to get her up on my back, you know, and then and then she would slowly roll over, you know. So we worked on that, um, you know, continuously every day, you know, and, and practically every night, you know, we was we was practicing, we were practicing, practicing, practice, till we got it down to a point where I could bring her over every single time, you know, in time with the music. Now back in those days, you know, I didn't have anybody to tell me so well. Frankie, you're gonna do this on five, six, seven, eight, or you know, in council, or, or this is the way that you have to go into it because there was no aerials being done before that time, so we didn't know how to. We just had to figure out some kind of way to get into this and and get out of it our, ourselves. Then uh, it comes the time for the for the contest to dance against Shorty Snowden. Now, now Shorty Snowden was one of the uh, to me he was. Well, not just to me, but he was considered one of the best Lindy Hoppers, uh, you know, like up in the Savoy. So come to night of the dance, it was on a Saturday night, and they have a contest every Saturday night, and the place is always packed, you know, people sitting all around the floors and everything like that, you know, and, and one of these groovy nights too, you know. And uh, so we come times for the for the dance. I was, I was nervous. I was shaking in my shoes, you know. So we got there, and we started dancing, and I was just they're just swinging. And every break that I get, that the music would make, I would, I would catch in this break, and Chick Webb would catch it along with it, you know. And, and we were just dancing, man. I was, and I was I was really having having a good time now, you know. I forgot about everything. I was just dancing, and, me, and Frida was just she was just twisting, man, and smiling and carrying on, and the crowd was breaking up and everything, you know. And, and so coming coming time for us to do the step, I said, Hey, Frida, you want to? Want to try the step? So she said, "Yeah, let's go for it." You crazy girl. <laughs> so she said, "Yeah, let's go for it." So I swung free out a couple of times, and I, I swung around. I jumped up over her head, you know. I turned, and we got back to back, and I flipped over, and she landed. And as she landed on the floor, Chick Webb hit the music. Bam! Man, I said, "All right, dog, that's it." <laughs> and we just, we just started going off the floor, and the Savoy Ballroom just exploded. I mean, it's like it's, it's like everybody in the place just they stood up and start hollering and clapping and carrying on. You talk to musicians, and uh, I find that uh, the dancers influence the musicians, and the musicians also influence the dancers. There was a, an interview that was done, and I think it was uh, called the Jitterbug or something, and this fellow trumpet player, uh, Bill Dillard, who uh, played with. Um, uh, Teddy Hills Band at the Savoy Ballroom. And he said, well, well yeah, you see, you see those dancers out there and you see them doing that some, you know, some fantastic step and you want to, you play a riff right along with the step that they're doing, you know, and then you might add a little something else to it. And as you add that little something else to it, then you see the dancer add that little something that you played on the riff. So it's just a, you know, interchange between a musician and a dancer on the floor, you know? So, yes, uh, uh, one influences the other, or as Dizzy said, uh, the dance enhance. <laughs> mm -hmm. I remember going going to parties when I was quite young, you know, like maybe eight, nine, ten years old. Uh, my mother's club was on a Halloween night. Was giving this dance at uh, at the Renaissance Ballroom, which was. I was living on 138th Street, Renaissance Ball, and was on 138th Street, so it was just up the block from where I lived. And I was up there just, you know, just bobbing my head to the music, you know. <laughs> so pretty soon my mother came up, came upstairs, and she got me, and she walked me down on the floor, and, and I'm dancing with my mom, and you know, I think, I just, <laughs> I just felt like I was just, just dancing. I was, I'm doing it with the big folks, you know. <laughs> so the dance is over. And I'm walking off the floor, and my mother got me by the hand, and I'm walking off the floor, and she looks down at me and says, you will never be a dancer. But years later, uh, when I was dancing, I told you I, I danced at the Cotton Club downtown, and at the same time that I was down there, I invited my mother and, some, and my aunt and some of her friends to come down to the club to see us work. I mean, so after the show is over, uh, you know, I get dressed, and I come back out to the table where my mother is, and I say, so I... I I said, well, how'd you like the show? And she said, oh, you were fantastic. I said, I asked you how you liked the show. I asked you how you liked me. <laughs> you know? so, 
<laughs> but that's a mother for you. She looked at. She said, oh, "That's my son up there, there." So, you know. So I and so I said to her, I said, uh, "Do you still think I'm stiff?" And she looked at me with a blank face. She, she didn't. She didn't know what I was talking about. I, and so I remind her, I say, do you remember the time you took, <laughs> I was looking, you took me to the Red House Ballroom and you told me that I was, I'd never be a dancer, I'd be too stiff. <laughs> she said, no, I don't remember. <laughs> she didn't remember. There was a lot of uh, segregation back in those days, as you know. Um, we did a thing up in, up in uh, Boston, Massachusetts, with, uh, with the Count Basie Band and, and, uh, and Billie Holiday. And we were on the bill with them. And uh, Billie Holiday being one of our favorite singers, you know, after our stint was over, we, we all came out and sat at this table just to hear Billy sing. And the manage, management came out and told us that we couldn't sit at the table, you know. So we had to get up and leave, and we went back to our dressing room, uh, back to our rooms. And um, uh, later on, Billy came by, Billy Holiday, that is. I, I'm, I'm familiar with her, that's why I can say Billy, if you don't mind. <laughs> so, so Billy came by and, and she said, hey, what happened to you guys? I saw you out there at first and then again I didn't see you. What's the matter, you don't like my singing? You know, kidding around, you know. So we told her, so what no other, you know, guy came over to us and told us we couldn't sit out there. And she said, what? I said, well, that's what, that's what the man says, you know. And, um, she went to the management and she said, well, look, uh, we all in the same show. And if they can't come out and sit while I'm singing, then uh, I'm not going to sing anymore. And uh, I don't know, they had, you know, I don't know everything that transpired between them, but whatever it was, they finally agreed and said, well, okay, we'll, there'll, there'll be one table, like they can come and sit at that one table. There's some bad black people, there's some bad white people, there's some bad every color, you know? But all of them are not the same. And, and this is the way I look at it, you know? Okay, so I ran up against some, some people who, who didn't like me. They didn't know me, so they didn't like me. They, only li they didn't like me because of my color. But okay, so you don't like me, I'm sorry about that, man, you know? So this is the way that I feel about it. I don't, I don't think I should, uh, you know, reflect on things that happened to, you know, like, uh, you know, my people in the past. I mean, because that just makes me angry and I don't want to be angry, you know. Uh, we advance, you know, so let's advance, you know. I don't know, how you supposed to feel when you're 80? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I feel older. I mean, if that's what you want to say, but, uh, you know, like I'll be around with Steve and Ryan and they say, well, man, let's go here, let's go there, let's go there. I say, hold it. Just hold it one minute, man. Who, who do you think you're talking to? You <laughs> said, we're talking to you. I said, well, you know how old I am? I can't be going around with you young dudes all this time. <laughs> you know, they just want to run, you know, be up all night long. I said, I can be up a little while, but I ain't going to be up all night long every night like you guys, you know. So, uh, as I say, they just look at look upon me as, you know, like, at, like one of them, you know. But, I guess if 80 is supposed to be old, then I don't feel <laughs> like I don't feel like I'm 80. I was so high, man. I just came down not too long ago. <laughs> you know, like I've been floating, you know, like on, on clouds, you know. The, what they call a cloud nine or something like that. I think I was above that. I, 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 and it took me so long to, um, like I say, come down because I was so... I, I, such a wonderful feeling inside, you know, like to meet all these people and, and everybody coming up and saying, happy birthday, Frankie, man, I'm glad you're still here, you know, and there's so many different people from so many different countries and everybody there together, you know, loving what they're doing and enjoying what they're doing, you know, loving and enjoying, I guess that's the same thing, right? <laughs> but, they, but they were just all there, you know, and, and for one purpose, you know, to say, Happy birthday, Frankie. Frankie has touched so many people. It's just an endless list of people who, yeah, 
He's out of joy. So Boy closed in 1958. They don't even have, you know, like a little piece of paper that says this is where the Civil War stood. It's a housing project there now. That's kind of sad to me, you know, because it was such an important part of the community there, you know. It was, it was an important part of the New York, period, you know. But um, what can I say? I doubt very seriously if we're gonna ever get the big bands back in force like they were, you know, like back in the 30s. And without swing music, then the Lindy Hop will probably die out. But then again, you, you look at it and say, ah, from 1927, and a lot of dancers have come and gone, and Lindy Hop is still around. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, what can you say? I mean, who, who knows? <laughs> I stopped dancing professionally in 1954, 40 years ago. I was working in the post office and trying to raise a family at the same time. And that's what I was into. I just don't look back on those things, you know, like, uh, and, and, and just, just to say I'm, I'm sorry that, it, that it's not going on and on, you know. So uh, I just keep looking ahead, darling. Just keep moving along, day at a time, moving along, you know.